Lasers are precise, powerful tools for cutting a wide range of materials. While beam sizes are generally small, usually fractions of a millimeter, they still have a measurable thickness. And that means the cuts they produce have thickness too. When you tell your laser to cut along the outline of a shape in your project, its path will be centered on the line, meaning half the beam will be inside and half will be outside, leading to end results that are slightly smaller or larger than their size in Lightburn. In other words, if you tell your laser to cut a 25 by 25 millimeter square and your laser's beam is half a millimeter thick, you'll end up with a 24.5 by 24.5 millimeter square cut out. The size of the hole in the stock you cut it from will be 25.5 by 25.5. But that's only if you don't take kerf into account and compensate accordingly. The good news is the Lightburn provides a really easy way to do just that. In the cut settings editor, you can apply a kerf offset value to compensate for the extra removed material. This value tells the laser to offset this path to the outside or inside of a closed shape by the amount you enter, resulting in a finished cutout that is true to size. Adding a kerf offset won't modify the underlying shape, so you can use the same design on lasers with different kerf widths, just by adjusting the kerf offset value. It's important to note that Due to the way a laser interacts differently with each material and combination of cut settings, you'll need to calculate the unique kerf offset value for each material you cut. And of course, applying a kerf offset is only useful if you can accurately measure your laser's kerf in the first place. There are multiple ways to measure kerf and obtain the necessary offset value, but we've got a handy tool that's proven to be accurate and effective. Start by going to the link in the description and downloading the Kerf test file. Then open the project in Lightburn. The tool consists of two layers. The objects in red are what will cut out and the objects in black will be scored. Start by adjusting the speed and power for these layers to ones you've determined are ideal for your specific machine and material. If you don't know these values yet, you'll need to first run material tests to determine the best settings for a clean cut and clear score. For this test to work, we need to make sure we have disabled any form of kerf offset from being applied. Double click on the red layer labeled as cut to open the cut settings editor and set kerf offset to 0.000 if it's not already off. Now we'll run the job on our laser using the material we intend to find the kerf offset value from to create our test pieces. If your laser has a honeycomb bed, you can place ceramic tile or another non-reflective material beneath the piece you're testing to keep the small pieces from falling through. Once complete, remove all pieces from the machine. A piece of painter's tape is often helpful for keeping everything together and ensuring nothing falls through the laser's bed. Place the test on a hard flat surface and carefully remove the painter's tape if you used it to help keep everything together. Then slide all of the loose internal pieces to the right side of the test. If the pieces happen to get scattered, the horizontal line across the rectangular pieces can be used to ensure they are oriented correctly. Write down the number that the line marked as D aligns with from the top scale as a whole number. In the example we're running, this is five. To find our decimal point, we need to determine which line on the bottom vernier scale best lines up with any of the lines on the bottom border. In this example, this is the fourth line, so we know our decimal point is four. To find our kerf offset, we'll use a simple equation, d dot e over 40. Since there are 20 pieces in the kerf test tool, if we divide by 20, we'd get our kerf. So to get the offset, which is half of the kerf, we divide by 40. For this example, we substitute our first value of five for D and our second value of four for E, giving us 5.4 divided by 40. You'll need to input the values you got from measuring your material here. Using a calculator for the division, this gives us 0.135 millimeters as our kerf offset. All that's left is to plug in the value you get 
into the Cut Settings Editor Curve Offset text box. Running the same box file with finger joints from before with these updated values, we can see that they fit together nice and snug. It's a good idea to save these values in your material library so that they can be reused later. However, depending on the level of climate control in your workspace, things like humidity can impact certain materials. So it's always a good idea to run another test before committing to batching out parts. Now you know what kerf and kerf offset is, its importance, and how to calculate kerf offset using this simple tool. Be sure to save the model to Lightburn's built-in art library, so it's always handy when you need it next. Remember to like and subscribe for more great videos on mastering Lightburn.